Have you ever wondered why you always blow out a candle? Why can't you do the opposite? Don't you think you can kill the flame by sucking air in? Hi, I'm Nikhilesh and I'm Kushal. We're the two broke scientists. Wait a minute. Why does a candle get blown out in the first place? Maybe it's because we breathe out carbon dioxide and not oxygen. Or maybe it's because the air we breathe out has water vapor in it. Well, actually, those are common misconceptions. For a candle to burn, you need a fuel, oxygen, and a source of ignition, which is the flame. As you blow out a candle, you generate a gust of air, which moves the flame away from the wick, and we lose the source of ignition. And that's why the flame goes out. So, that brings us back to the initial question. Even when you suck air in, there is a movement of air, and that should kill the flame, right? True, but there is a subtle difference between sucking air in and blowing it. When you blow air, it comes out like a jet. That means it has a fixed direction associated with it. But when you suck air in, there's no directionality. It comes in from all directions. Because air comes out like a jet, the mass flux of air, that is the mass per unit area, is higher when compared to suction. This higher mass flux is what extinguishes the flame. You can actually see the difference between suction and blowing in your very own kitchen. If you look closely at the exhaust in your kitchen, you see that it is sucking air at a low velocity. Just place a small piece of paper at the exhaust and it hardly moves. But if you put the same piece of paper at the outlet of the exhaust where it is blowing, you see that the velocity is high. Same mass flow rate but different velocities. So what did Kushal mean when he said same mass flow rate but different velocities? Imagine you have a pipe that's sucking air from one side and blowing it out through the other. You see, like as we said, air comes in through all directions, meaning it has a higher area. But the same mass of air goes out through a smaller area. This change in area is what causes the inlet to have low velocity, but the outlet to have a higher velocity. So we see that suction is clearly different from blowing. But why? Why does the flow behave differently in these two cases? The physical mechanism that affects both types of flows are slightly different. Typically in suction, a vacuum is created. This means that a region of low pressure attracts the molecules around it. This attraction causes the fluid to accelerate into the region of low pressure from all sides. The same thing doesn't happen in blowing. In an ideal world where there is no viscosity, fluid would come out of a hole, turn around the lip of the hole and spread out. But because of the effect of viscosity, the fluid cannot turn at such a sharp angle and a phenomenon called flow separation occurs. Flow separation is where fluid cannot follow the surface of a body anymore. And that is why the fluid has no choice but to go forward like a jet. Flow separation doesn't affect suction because when a fluid is sucked in, it accelerates and an accelerating flow is not susceptible to flow separation. Fluid that is blown out does not accelerate and in fact, it retards because of the effect of viscosity in the surrounding medium. So I guess now it's pretty clear why we blow out a candle and don't suck it in. But in fact, the difference in flow between blowing and suction was used to explain a lot of physical phenomena. But be careful, not all of them were right. One of the most common and famous example is the putt-putt or the pop pop boat. The physics behind the working of the simple toy has been debated over quite a lot. The working principle of the putt-putt boat is pretty simple. There is water inside the tubes, which is heated by a flame or a candle. This heated water converts to steam, and since steam is a gas and occupies more volume, it is ejected from the boat in the form of a jet. This ejected steam leaves a vacuum inside the tubes, which is then again filled by water rushing in from all sides. The pop sound is when the steam is ejected, and this is when the boat moves forward. But when the water is sucked in, it comes in from all directions. And during this suction stroke, the boat doesn't move backward. This was explained using Newton's third law. During the ejection stroke, the steam comes out in a specific direction. And you get a reaction in the opposite direction. Whereas, during the suction stroke, water enters from all directions. And because of which, you don't experience a reaction force. And the putt-putt boat moves forward. Psych! That's the wrong explanation. <laughs> the mistake that Kushal and a lot of people before him did was that they considered water as a separate entity. But in fact, you can't do that. 
you have to consider the boat and the water together. To understand exactly how a putt-putt boat works, consider a simple analogy. Imagine if a man was standing at the front of a boat and he starts running back and jumps off the boat. Because he has gained a momentum in the backward direction, the boat, according to Newton's third law, is now propelled forward. This is exactly like the ejection stroke. Now, consider a man who is already in the water and sees the boat moving past him. He climbs onto the ladder, onto the boat and starts running to the front. But this time, he doesn't jump off the front. In doing so, he has to retard. That means, he imparts his forward momentum back to the boat. This is exactly what happens during the suction stroke. When the water comes in, it might slow down the boat a little bit, but the moment it hits the boat, it imparts its momentum back to the boat and the boat continues moving forward. Alright, so hopefully now you understand the difference between blowing and suction and how that was incorrectly used to explain the working of a putt-putt boat. We also have an interesting question for you. Suction and blowing was incorrectly used to explain a concept called Feynman sprinkler. Do check it out and let us know what you think about it. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye. Bye.